Hi guys, so um, I've never done a full review of this book. I, I have not finished this book. You know what page I'm on? I'm on page 264 and I got, how many pages is that? 319. So I'm honestly really close to finishing. Um, but this is my review, my thoughts. Um, I've put a lot of like annotations and maybe I'll go over that in a separate video. Um, however, I am Will You Read coming on the show of Will You Watch? Yes, I definitely plagiarized from myself. And that will be the point of the book, <laughs> the plot. When you boil it down, because this book is set in a contemporary world with an anti-hero, yes, anti-hero June Hayward. And you don't see so many anti-heroes nowadays. Well, oh, come on, William. You've, you've read Rise of the Red Blade. I mean, Inquisitor Rise of the Red Blade, like the Star Wars book. Yeah, that's an anti-hero. Um... June is an author who lacks to wield the talent of writing, but loves the art of writing and talks about her passion and how she just loves it. Um, whereas her author friend, Athena Lou, does not. Athena is a star of the literary world. And in midst that of that, she dies inadvertently, leaving the manuscript of a historical fiction novel regarding the Chinese labor corps. Corps. <sighs> Sorry. Um, then June decides to polish that novel and publish it. But some things like that offer debate in the book and to the reader exactly. So it's like our author, Rebecca F. Quang is like, talking to us. Gosh, she is talking to us. Um, the book hits great success, but at what cost? The publishing industry is a weird beast in that some books that are on top book lists are really not meant for the spotlight. Yeah, I know, right? Um, and this book shows evolution from both the author perspective and the way the publishing world works in a set satirized psychological way. And it questions the culture of art versus consumers versus actual readers. I know that was a, that was a lot to process, even for the autistic brain here. Um, this book heavily emphasizes the intent, the amount of cultural diversity and to what lengths the guardrails of who should tell their own cultural stories. Like for example, Athena is Asian American and June Hayward is Caucasian slash white. There's a lot of subconscious references <laughs> to Edgar Allan Poe, Herman Melville, Ernest Hemingway, in the way the Rebecca in the way that Rebecca writes this story. And in the podcast interview from Port Over, a Barnes & Noble podcast, she mentions the idea of dead author philosophy. Yes, that is such a, an iconic wording here. I enjoy the pacing, the reader authenticity, how authors work on their work, and how the book publishing industry works. This book really tests the reader's belief about what it means to be a consumer of stories and how to address the way of telling the story that resonates in the most surest way. To me, the rating is 3.9, but rounded to four stars. And I told you already, I put a DNF on this book. So um, that's my review, my thoughts and I'll probably never finish this book. I'll be honest with you. It's a nice book to keep around. Gotta say, great pictures. <laughs> you know, um, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll see that I did take some funny pictures with this. So thank you for watching. Bye. <laughs> Bye.
Okay.